Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm so glad you've joined me for this devotion today. We are in 1 Kings chapter 8. I'm recording this devotion actually near the end of uh, September. The temperatures are dropping. It's a beautiful fall day. That's my favorite season. One of the things I really love about living here in the Carolinas is the fall because it lasts. It's not quick. And uh, so I'm in a good mood. I just love the fall. And as I was walking over to record today, just so pleasant outside. God blesses us. And that's just one of his blessings. It's got nothing to do with 1 Kings chapter 8. It's just, I love the fall. And this is a beautiful day in the end of September. All right. 1 Kings chapter 8. Here, um, Solomon's temple, the, the temple in Jerusalem, they finished building it. It's, it's large. It's, it's uh, gorgeous. It's got a lot of gold in it. And uh, in this chapter, the Ark of the Covenant is carried by the priest and placed in the Holy of Holies. They have a, a worship service during which they dedicate the temple to the Lord. And part of that service... Solomon goes up on this elevated platform, which is in the courtyard immediately in front of the temple building. Remember, the temple building had two sections, had the Holy of Holies, and then the innermost, I mean, had the holy place, and then the innermost was the Holy of Holies, where the, where the Ark of the Covenant was located. And outside the building, the courtyard, there, there's this elevated platform, and uh, on top of it is this altar uh, where they would make sacrifices. And Solomon kneels there, raises his hands to the heavens, and he prays. And his prayer during this time of dedication is informative, teaches us. Look in chapter 8 of 1 Kings at verse 27. Solomon prays, but will God indeed dwell on the earth? He's talking about the earth and the temple. Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this house which I have built. Solomon built this beautiful, large temple, and he understood. He understood, and he, and he said it to God in this prayer in front of the people of Israel gathered for the dedication that day, that this temple can't hold God. The earth can't hold God. The universe can't hold God. God is everywhere, and you can't put God in a box. You can't put God in in a building. And yet he also knew that this temple for the people of Israel would symbolize the presence of God among his people and that they would not only come there and offer sacrifices and pray, but there would be other times that wherever the people were in Israel, they would look in the direction of the temple and pray toward it. The way, say, Muslims look a certain direction and pray, he said that's what they would do. So in verses 28 and 29, he says, Yet have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his supplication. So, Lord, I know you're not just in this temple. You're everywhere. But please regard my prayer. Pay attention to it and honor it, O Lord. And listen to the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you today, that your eyes may be open toward this house night and day, toward the place of which you have said, my name shall be there, to listen to the prayer which your servant shall pray toward this place. So Solomon is saying he would offer prayers in the direction of the temple, but he goes on to say, so will the people. Look at verse 30. Listen to the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. So he knew they were going to pray in the direction of the temple. And so in verse 30, in Solomon's prayer, he says, when they pray toward this place, hear in heaven your dwelling place, hear and forgive. So David, I mean, Solomon recognizes in his prayer that even though he and the people would be prayed in the direction of the temple, when God heard their prayers, it wasn't because God was in the temple and heard there. He said, in heaven, your dwelling place, hear our prayers. And he actually repeats that um, several times, eight times. You have it there in verse, verse 30. Um, and then in verse uh, 31, if a man sins against his neighbor uh, and he, he repents and so on, verse 32, then here in heaven, again in verse 34, 
another time they pray, then here in heaven in verse 36, then here in heaven and forgive, verse 39, then here in heaven, your dwelling place, verse 43, here in heaven, your dwelling place, verse 45, then here in heaven, their prayer and the, their supplication, verse 49, then hear their prayer and their supplication in heaven, your dwelling place. Now, what's the point? He'd spent seven years building this temple. It's massive, expensive, beautiful, symbolized the presence of God. He and the people of Israel would pray in the direction of that temple, but Solomon makes it clear to the Lord and to the people of Israel that God doesn't dwell in that building. God, God cannot be contained in a building, and even though they pray in the direction of that building, God hears their prayer but he's in heaven. He's in heaven when he hears their prayer. And that's repeated over and over in this chapter. Now, I think a takeaway for us is that places and buildings are important. Symbols are important and can be very powerful and meaningful. They can That buildings and places and symbols can be a blessing to us and assist us unless the symbol, the building, the place actually become more important to us than the Lord himself. Unless we become more devoted to and concerned about the symbol, the place, the building, than we do actually obeying Jesus and having a heart that is tender toward him. At the end of chapter 8, as Solomon speaks to the people after his prayer has concluded, he says in verse 61, he says, let your heart, therefore, talking to the people, let your heart, therefore, be wholly devoted to the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments. In other words, a heart for Jesus is more important than a building. Obeying the Lord in your daily living, more important than any symbols. Symbols, buildings, and places matter, but not as much as true devotion to Jesus and obedience to Jesus. And sometimes in church, we're not careful. We let the traditions and the symbols and the places and the things and the buildings become more too big in our heart, if you will. And in some ways, on some level, sometimes they become more important to us than Jesus himself. And that's when we have made them into an idol. God doesn't live in a place. God is everywhere. And he hears our prayers as they ascend to heaven, not to a building. That's the word for today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.